Let's look at the matrix representations of the ladder operators. In previous videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, I used the ladder operators to try and understand the quantum harmonic oscillator. In those videos, I derived some very useful relationships. I'm going to write those relationships down, and I'm going to use them to derive the matrix representations of the ladder operators. And specifically, I'm going to be looking at the energy basis. I'm going to express these matrix representations in the energy basis, which is the same thing that I did for the Hamiltonian operator in the previous video. So a lot of the reasoning is going to be similar in this video. So first, let's have a look at the lowering operator. That I'm representing as a hat. What does a hat do to uh, some ket labeled by little n? Well, it is the lowering operator, so it lowers this ket by 1. But we also need a normalization constant over here. So we have n underneath the square root. We have a square root of n. That's our normalization coefficient. And the ket gets turned into n minus 1. So this kind of looks like an eigenvalue equation, but it's not quite. Because for an eigenvalue equation, we need the same eigenstate over here. But this is not the same eigenstate. This eigenstate has been lowered by 1. So the index over here, little n, has been lowered by 1. So we've gone from n to n minus 1. Now, what I want to do to this relationship over here is I want to act on it with a bra. I'm going to take another bra, I'm going to act on it, and I'm going to make a sandwich for this a. So this lowering operator is going to get sandwiched between two energy eigenstates. Remember, these are energy eigenstates. They're labeled by this lower n over here, this lowercase n. And that lowercase n is an eigenvalue of the number operator. The Hamiltonian and the number operator share the same eigenstates. They don't share the same eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are different, but they share the same eigenstates. Now, how are the eigenvalues different? Well, the, these little n's can actually be written, uh, can actually be used to express the energy eigenvalues. So e sub n, that's the energy eigenvalue, that is written in terms of this lowercase n. And we saw that in the previous video. So now, let's make the sandwich I was talking about. So we're going to have a bra, which I'll label by m over here. And I'm going to put a inside the sandwich. So the analogy to a sandwich is we have two slices of bread, and inside we can have the lettuce, or whatever you prefer to put in your sandwich. So we have a over here. That is the lowering operator. It is one of the two ladder operators. And we'll have a look at the raising operator in a second. But first, I want to deal with this guy. So from this equation up here, we can see what happens to the right-hand side. So if we bring in this bra, this bra is going to come and attack this ket. So what we're going to have is square root of n multiplied by this bra and this ket. So the ket we have on the right-hand side is different. It has been lowered. That is the effect of this lowering operator. And can you see that this root n, I've moved out from the inside. So this root n would actually be on the inside over here. If I, if I just replaced this over here with this over here, so this left-hand side and this right-hand side are equivalent. So if I substituted that in over here, I would have square root of n inside the sandwich. But because square root of n is just a real number, I can move that around. Commutativity applies to these real numbers when you're multiplying the real numbers. So that works. But you, in general, you cannot move bras, kets, and operators around. The order is very important in quantum mechanics for operators, bras, and kets. All of these guys, the order is essential. But real numbers, th this is just numerical coefficients. They can be moved around. So this combination over here, that is an inner product. We have a bra and a ket. And this inner product can be written in a more condensed notation. It can be written in terms of the Kronecker delta symbol. I'm going to do that over here. So we're going to, still going to have square root of n. Square root of n is that numerical coefficient. But now we're going to have a Kronecker delta symbol. And the indices for that Kronecker delta symbol are going to be m, comma, n minus 1. Now, if you watched the previous video where I did this for the Hamiltonian operator, I got m, n as the indices for the Kronecker delta. That's because the Hamiltonian operator, when it's expressed in its own basis, in the energy eigenbasis, it is diagonal. It's a diagonal matrix. All of the entries are on the diagonal. Everything else is 0. That is not the case over here. Over here, we have n minus 1. So that's telling us that it's going to be off the diagonal. It's not going to be on the diagonal. It's just going to be 1 to the side. So this is the expression that we have for a. Let's do the analogous uh, form 
for a dagger, which is the raising operator. So I'm going to do this for the raising operator now. So when the raising operator acts on one of these energy eigenstates labeled by lowercase n, the normalization coefficient is not square root of n, it is square root of n plus 1. So we have n plus 1 over here. And this ket doesn't get lowered, it gets raised, hence the name raising operator. And I need to put a little dagger over here. I forgot to put this little dagger. This dagger means that this is the Hermitian conjugate of this guy. So here we have n plus 1. So this is the relationship that we're familiar with from the previous videos. So what is different about this relationship? Over here we have a, over here we have a dagger. So all I've done is I've taken the Hermitian conjugate. That is what this dagger denotes. It's the Hermitian conjugate, which is also sometimes called the Hermitian adjoint. And when this a dagger acts on one of the energy eigenstates, it has the effect of raising the index inside. So n goes to n plus 1. And square root of n plus 1, that is the normalization coefficient. Now, let's use the same procedure that we did over here. So we're going to take a sandwich. We're going to have m on the left. This is a bra. And then we're going to have a dagger. And then we're going to have n over here. So this is n. That's the same n that we have here. And the important distinction is now we have a dagger. So over here we have a, and now we have a dagger. So let's have a look. You can just swap this over here for this. And we can pull out a factor of square root of n plus 1. And then we're going to have a bra cat combination. And that bra cat combination is going to have m, and then it's going to have n plus 1. And now we can write this as a Kronecker delta symbol. So we're still going to have n plus 1, but this Kronecker delta is now going to have two indices. It's going to have m and n plus 1. So can you see how these relationships are analogous? Over here we have m, n minus 1, and over here we have m, n plus 1. Another difference that you might observe is that inside the square root we have n plus 1. That just comes from the normalization coefficient up here. Now one point I want to stress on is that we didn't have to use, uh, we, we didn't have to do it this way. We, we could have done it in an alternative way. We could have acted on the bras. So these operators could also have acted on the bras. So we could have taken this guy and acted on a bra. And over here we could have acted on a bra. And we would have gotten similar expressions. And in the end, we would have had the same matrix representation. So that's an important point to stress on. These operators, when they're inside a sandwich, they can act on the right-hand side, they can act on the ket, and they can act on the bra. But when we act on the bra, we have to consider the Hermitian conjugate. Right? Because this bra is actually the Hermitian conjugate of the ket. Any equation you have written in terms of kets, well, you could just take the entire equation, just Hermitian conjugate both sides, and that's going to give you the equivalent bra equation. So that is an important point to stress on. So I won't write that out because we already have all the information that we need to construct the matrix representations. So what is this going to look like? So we know that these numerical values, n, uh, n can go from 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. It is a non-negative integer. That is an important point to stress on. So that means when we construct our matrices, the first entry is going to be 0, 0. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as the rows, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as the columns. So that's, that's what we're going to have. So now let's do A first. What is A going to look like? So I'm going to write A over here, A hat. And I'm going to write arrow. I'm not actually going to write an equal sign, because th this is not an equal sign. This is just a representation of the operator in a particular basis. And this is a very special basis. It is the energy eigenbasis. It's the same basis that we used to represent the Hamiltonian operator. So what is this going to look like over here? Let's reason through it. We know that this is not on the diagonal because of this n minus 1 over here. It is going to be slightly off the diagonal. And in fact, it's going to be above the diagonal. So instead of having square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, and so on, we're going to have everything off the diagonal. So I'll, I'll draw this so you can see what I mean. If the diagonal elements are here, if we have 0, 0, 0, and then 0 like this, if this is the diagonal, what we're going to have is every, all of these guys are going to be above the diagonal. So over here, we're going to have square root of 1. Then over here, we're going to have square root of 2. And then we're going to have square root of 3. So that's what this is going to look like. And then everything else is going to be zeros. And I'll show you why uh, this has to be true. So I'll put all of the zeros in the right place. And in the same, same way that we had 
these matrices just go on forever in the previous video, this is just going to keep on going on. So we're going to have some dots over here, uh, some more dots over here. This is just going to keep on going on. So we know that on the diagonal, this has to be zero because the Kronecker delta symbol is zero when these two indices are not equal. When M and N are equal, this is going to be zero because we're going to have less than one. We're going to have N minus one over here. So what we need is that M is equal to N minus one. And that only happens on this off diagonal over here. So consider, consider this term over here. What is going on in this term? Over here, the row number, we're in the zeroth row. Right? This is the zeroth row. We start at zero. And we're in, uh, we're in column one. So m is equal to zero, and n is equal to one. One minus one is equal to zero, so we have zero, zero. These indices are equal. That gives us a one over here. And over here, we're going to have one inside the square root. And that's going to give us square root of one. Let's consider this two over here, this square root of two. Where is this uh, located? So we're on, we're in this row over here. This is row one. So m is equal to one. What about over here? This is column two, zero, one, two. Remember, we're starting from zero. So here we have one and then two. If we put one over here and two over here, two minus one, that's equal to one. So we have one, one. These coefficients are, these indices are equal, so this Kronecker delta symbol is going to be equal to 1. And because n is equal to 2, underneath the square root, we're going to have square root of 2. That explains this relationship over here. And this is going to keep on going on. We're going to have square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 4, and it's going to keep on going on forever because there is no upper bound on these indices over here. There is a lower bound. The lower bound is 0. 0 is the smallest value you can have. So I'll complete this by drawing some brackets around the matrix, because this is a matrix representation. So now let's have a look at a dagger. First of all, what is going to happen with a dagger? We know that a and a dagger have a special relationship. That special relationship is that they are Hermitian conjugates of each other. What happens when you take the Hermitian conjugate of a matrix? Well, you have to take the complex conjugate of all of the elements in the matrix, and you also have to take the transpose. So the Hermitian conjugate is a combination of those two operations. We take the transpose and we complex conjugate all of the elements inside that matrix. So what is that going to do to this matrix over here? Well, all of these guys are real numbers. So complex conjugation isn't going to do anything. It's not going to change the values. But taking the transpose will change the values. Taking the transpose is going to take these values and it's going to put them underneath. So these are not going to be above the diagonal. They're going to be below the diagonal over here. So let's draw that. Let's draw that representation. And then I'll show you that that is consistent with what we derived over here. So let's start off with 0 over here. And then we're going to have square root of 1. And we're going to have 0, 0 in the diagonal, 0 over here. And we're going to have square root of 2. We're going to keep having zeros, zeros, more zeros. This is the diagonal. And then we're going to have square root of 3. We're going to have some more zeros. And all of this is also going to be zeros. And this is just going to keep on going. And the diagonal is going to keep on going here. And all of these zeros are going to keep on going. And I'll put some brackets around here. So can you see how this is actually just the transpose of this guy over here? We, we don't have to worry about taking the complex conjugate because all the elements are real. All of these guys are real. so the complex conjugate uh, doesn't do anything. Because if you remember from some of the earlier videos in this playlist where we talk about complex numbers, the real numbers, they just sit on the real axis. And taking the complex conjugate, it can be visualized by reflecting over that real axis. But if you're on the real axis, you're just going to stay on the real axis when you do the reflection. So that's why taking the complex conjugate doesn't do anything to the real numbers. You can also think of it as, uh, taking the complex, complex conjugate is the same as swapping the sign of the imaginary component. But these guys don't have any imaginary component. Their imaginary component is zero because they are real numbers. So that's why uh, the complex conjugation operation doesn't actually do anything. But taking the transpose does do something. right? So we've taken this uh, off diagonal over here, and we've popped it underneath. So over here we have it above the diagonal, and here we have it below the diagonal. Now, let's make sure that this is consistent with what we have up here. Let's pick one of these values over here and make sure that it's consistent. Let's pick square root of 1. So where is this located? This row is row 1. Remember, we're starting from 0, so this is 0, 1. 
we're in row one and we're in column zero. So we have one, zero. Let's have a look over here. If we put one equal to m, so m is equal to one, and this is equal to zero, here we're gonna have zero plus one, that's one. So we'll have one, one. These indices are the same. That means this Kronecker delta symbol is gonna be equal to one. And now if we take that n value over here, which is zero, we put it underneath, that's gonna be zero plus one, we're gonna get square root of one. So it's gonna get turned on over here. For other values, it's gonna get turned off. That's, be, that's why we have zeros over here. That's because these indices are not equal. M is not equal to N plus one for all of these values where we have a zero. Let's pick this square root of three. Let's make sure that this square root of three is valid and it fits with this representation that we have up here. So where is this square root of three located? Here, let's have a look at the row. We have zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. That is the row number. So M is equal to three. Now let's have a look at the column number. The column is zero, one, two. This is column two. So if we put N equal to two, that's gonna be two plus one. Three is indeed equal to two plus one. We're gonna have three, three. That means that this Kronecker delta symbol gets turned on and it is equal to one. Now let's have a look at this square root. Here we're gonna have two plus one because N is equal to two. We're gonna have two plus one and that's square root of three. So it is consistent. This derivation that we got from these relationships up here, they are consistent with these matrix representations. And we can see that if we take the Hermitian conjugate of this guy, we can get back to this guy. Because taking the Hermitian conjugate twice gets you back to where you started. So a dagger dagger is just equal to a. That dagger just denotes the Hermitian conjugate or the Hermitian adjoint. So these two matrices are the matrix representations of the ladder operators in the energy basis. And it's important to stress that we're doing this in the energy eigenbasis. If we picked different basis vectors, these would not be the same matrices. But in general, the energy eigenbasis is one of the most useful bases that we could use in quantum mechanics. Because the Hamiltonian operator is such an important operator. Right? That's what we covered in the previous video. In the next video, we're gonna use these matrix representations to construct the matrix representations of the position and the momentum operators. So this video has allowed us to take these relationships for A and A dagger, the raising and lowering operators, and it's allowed us to take this der derivation over here and uh, write it in terms of the Kronecker delta symbols. And then we have represented A and A dagger, the raising and lowering operators, in terms of the energy eigenbasis. So if you want to see the position and momentum operators also represented as matrices, make sure to check out the next video in the quantum mechanics playlist.